Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Sorry, I've been away for a little bit. Uh, just been busy with life, army, all kinds of good stuff. But today, I wanted to do a little bit update video for you guys. Uh, I also am doing a little preventive maintenance, kind of not really. Stumbled upon some APR red top coil packs. The car might not need them. I might not see an improvement. That might be worse, but they're easy enough to throw in, so I'm gonna throw those in today. But before we do that, I wanna do a little bit of an update on the car. First update is that it's filthy. Yep, it's uh, been sitting outside for a little while. The garage is packed full of stuff, so I haven't had a chance to park in the garage just yet. Moved and all kinds of good stuff. But in the last video, you guys saw the new wheels, and don't know if you remember, but now the tires are bigger. First, I went with the 245. They were too small. I didn't like the way it looked, so these are a 265. The Yokohama Advan Apex, uh, same, you know, same tire and everything. I also, I don't know if you can see that, but got the calipers painted. They're uh, Porsche yellow, got new decals on it, painted front and rear, obviously, right there. Local shop to me called Euro Customs PR hooked it up, and they came out fantastic. We also have black trim on the car now uh, as they painted that while the car was getting the calipers done. Next thing are these awesome carbon fiber side skirts and i'm being sarcastic because obviously those are the stock blades i got uh, side skirts from rw carbon they didn't end up fitting super frustrating but they took care of it and refunded me my money so we still have the stock blades on there i did order some carbon fiber blades however from ecs uh, i've heard they have some issues with clear coat so i'm going to ppf them and throw them on before we go to avf in uh, about a week if you guys are going to be there let me know hit me up if you see the purple audi come say hi let me go ahead and pop the hood and I'll show you guys how to throw these coil packs in. So here we are once again under the hood of the Audi. Uh, a little bit dirtier right now though. See all those leaves again because it's being parked outside. That's okay. It's got PPF and it's got ceramic coating so it is being protected from the sun. But anyhow, here's the APR coil pack. Looks like any other coil pack. It says APR. It's red. It'll look kind of cool down there. It'll add a little bit of a flash to the engine bay. And according to ABR, these uh, produce more power. So again, you know, I, I kind of stumbled upon them for little to no money. So I'm going to go ahead and throw them in and, uh, you know, what the heck, see what happens. But this is a pretty straightforward install. I'm not going to do a DIY here for you guys. I mean, you just need to get stuff out of the way, pull the torques on each of the coil packs, pull the coil packs up. Well, disconnect them first. Pull the coil packs up, put the new one in, reconnect everything. You're good to go. This side's going to be a little bit more hard because of the uh, the intake tube. And then over here, well, this side's probably going to suck too. We have a lot going on here. Uh, the breather hose, some wiring. It's not going to be the easiest thing, but it should still be fairly easy. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you guys. A couple of new parts coming in. Hopefully we'll have them in time for ABF uh, up in Helen. But I went with, uh, well, it's not on there yet, but carbon fiber radiator cover from 034. We have the carbon fiber engine uh, side cover pieces from 034 as well, those are coming. And 034's brake rotors. I'm very excited for those because when I did the calipers, as you can see, the rotors are they're pretty lipped right here, very grooved. Uh, I did replace the pads already with some Hawk ceramics. I wish I could have done the rotors at the same time, but timing wasn't on my uh, side. so. Those are coming, and I will be doing an install video on how to put those on. All right, so, uh, you know, like I said, we're not going to do a DIY here. Just not, not a full-on step-by-step, but as you can see, I've disconnected. I did have a catch can, so I disconnected the hoses to the inlet hose here. I did disconnect this plastic wire holder down here. I've already went ahead and removed the harnesses out of the coil packs. All that's left is the little Torx that's down here on each one of the coil packs. We'll go ahead and pull those up and uh, show you the new ones once they're put in. All right, we got the uh, driver's side of the engine block done. You can just see the little bit of red down there. Again, you know, don't necessarily know if this is gonna do anything for me, but the red looks cool. They should be red from factory, but for whatever reason, Audi does them in black. So just a little touch of red inside the engine bay to remind people that it's an S4. Not, not sure that it needs it with the, uh, the downpipe, the exhaust, all that stuff. But there we go. That side's actually probably a little bit more difficult than this side. The only reason this side's gonna be difficult is because the bolt that's down here. So I just have to remove the intake tube and actually it shouldn't be too bad after that because the ones under this wire harness, the ones right there, pop those out, put the new ones in. We're good to go. All right, guys, we are finished up with the APR coil pack install. Let's take a look at it. Again, 
Just a little touch of red. Nothing crazy. Kind of matches the, you know, the battery cable, the red on the engine cover. And now the engine cover's back on. What I was saying is I got the carbon fiber side pieces from 034. So this would be carbon, this would be carbon, and then this would be carbon as well. I think it'll go really well with everything that's going on here. Maybe I'll do the carbon ECU cover, but I haven't heard the greatest things about that, and you're not really supposed to cover this up, so we'll see what happens. All right, hey guys, uh, it's a new day. A couple things happened this week. My buddy came down from Mississippi to visit. Uh, the one with the A3 that I did the install on in the previous video. So I didn't really have too much time to film, and plus I worked during the week. So here we are, Saturday. I've got the tent behind me, keep me away from this Florida sun. And I'm actually gonna transition this video a little bit. I was gonna do two separate videos, one sort of an update and another uh, install video for what we've got behind me now. But I decided let's just go ahead and knock out one video. I've got uh, AVF coming up in Helen, Georgia here in a couple of days. So I gotta get this done. Got to get a couple things done. I'm going to try to get this video up before I leave for Georgia. And uh, yeah, let's check out what we've got going on. Now, a logical person would think I'm working under the hood today. But that is, in fact, incorrect. I would like to welcome 034 Motorsport to the channel officially in the way of brake rotors. These are literally a piece of art. I mean, I don't even want to put these on the car. I know they're going to perform great, but they look amazing. These are beautiful. We've got a two-piece design. These are much lighter than the factory ones, so a little bit of unsprung weight is uh, always a good thing. And I also want to show you guys, the reason why I have the hood popped is because I purchased their carbon fiber engine pieces. And uh, that's going to be these two here on either side. They're double sided tape, they just kind of stick down, you want to clean and prep the surface. Use alcohol to make sure there's nothing, no contaminants or anything left on it. Stick it down and you're good to go. But it adds a nice carbon fiber bit to the engine bay to match the intake. And on the way still, I did get the raid, uh, the radiator cover. I think I mentioned that before, but I just wanted to show you guys. This is in, and that's on the way. I didn't really want to do a DIY today, but looking on the internet, looking at YouTube, I didn't really see too many people doing B9 brake installs, so I figure, why not? And I think, uh, don't quote me on this, might be wrong, but I believe this will be the first B9S4034 brake rotor install on YouTube. Find another one, let me know. I just did a quick search. I saw some ECS uh, installs and some regular brakes, but we're gonna be doing the 034s today. I'm pretty much gonna do one corner at a time, jack it up, pull the wheel, do the work, put it back together. The rear I might have to do at the same time because you do have to release the parking brake in VACOM. So make sure you have VACOM or OBD11 in order to do this. I don't know if there's a workaround for it, but I have VACOM, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. I'm gonna get set up, kind of get this going. Uh, again, this will just kind of be a step-by-step -step DIY, not too in-depth, but enough to let you guys know what to do. Uh, and before I get started, I did wanna give a big, big shout out to Andrew at ORT. I'll link them down below. He actually had these in stock, in hand, ready to go when 034 did not. The front rotors are on back order for like a couple more weeks. So again, Andrew, thank you. Thank you for getting these to me in time. Uh, I'll be good to go for Georgia. All right, now let's get started. So first thing you wanna do, obviously, jack it up, support it. You don't wanna be working on a car without a jack stand. Second is disconnecting the brake pad sensor wire. It runs up over. This connector here comes off with a 90 degree turn. It sits in here, so you turn it 90 and you can pull that out. The bracket back here that attaches everything is held in with two M10s. I did have to get creative because this is too long to fit a ratchet on the back because of the shock body. So, I've got a 10 mil. This goes under here. And I was able to get that out just like that. Okay, for the next bolts, it's gonna be a 21 millimeter. We are gonna remove them. Let's see if I can find it. So up top there, there's one down there, and there's one right here. These are 21 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. We've got everything disconnected. The brake line is gonna stay on the caliper, unless you're replacing the caliper, or if you really wanna do a brake fluid flush, which I'm not doing today. That was done when I had the calipers painted and the new pads put on already. You can see the new pads there. So we're gonna leave all this connected, brackets disconnected, and then we've got a box here that when I take the caliper off, it's gonna rest on this box. All right, let's go ahead and get those bolts in. So as you can see, the caliper is out. These are those 21 mils. Word of advice, uh, I couldn't fit my breaker bar in there and this is not 
a ratcheting breaker bar. So I used a half inch socket, 21 mil, and then I used part of my jack handle. And I was able to get a couple of turns, a couple of small turns, uh, angling it down under the car and then pulling it this way. Once you break it loose, obviously you can pull the jack handle off and then go at it with the ratchet, but just kind of wanted to give you a tip there. Next, we're gonna pull out this Torx. I believe it is a T30, but I will double check that. So indeed, it was a T30. Sometimes these are stuck in there with corrosion, but mine actually came out very, very minimally. Fingers crossed for the other three. I went ahead and sprayed some penetrating oil in here just to kind of break this free. If you're gonna reuse the rotor, obviously don't hit it with a hammer. I'm not reusing the rotor, so I've got a mallet. Now I've got a hammer. I do have the studs on here. I am like 99% sure I can keep them on because where it stops is back into the rotor. It doesn't stop on top here. So I'm gonna leave these on. I don't really wanna screw up anything with, with the Allen bits there, I'm trying to take these out, relock tighten them, etc. So I'm gonna leave them on. Uh, if you have wheel bolts, recommend putting one in. That way when you hit this off, it doesn't just come flying off. The wheel bolt will stop it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hammer away at this thing hopefully it comes right out all right so far no good uh i've sprayed some pp blast in here first there's wd-40 throw some pp blast in there just gonna let it soak for a minute while i am waiting on that i figured i would show you guys the ecs side blades so it's kind of weird to look at because it's up on the jack so here's the other side it actually fits really well there is slight gaps at each end I think I'm gonna slide in like some foam right here just to fill it in. But these look pretty good. Quality is decent. I mean, for the money, I would hope so. But again, I think what I said in a previous clip is that I'm gonna have these PPF'd because I've heard there's clear coat issues. So I'll PPF them that way, I just don't have to worry about it. But they're on, they're installed, they look good, and it kind of ties everything together with the, the front lip. We've got the carbon mirrors from Audi. We've got the carbon wing from Audi. And then the rear balance as well. Overall, super happy with the whole look, the way it all turned out. I am searching for OEM Black Optics trim. I had this painted and I just discovered we've got a chip. So I'm just gonna touch that up for now. Since I'm going to Georgia this week, I'm pretty disappointed, but, but the gentleman that did it, he did refund me, so not the end of the world. All right, we got the rotor off. Thanks to you guys. I posted on Facebook just to see if I was going to have to remove these. Did not have to remove them, obviously. Just needed to, you know, put my purse down, grab my hammer, and hit this thing. But I do think that the PB Blast helped uh, when I sprayed it in here. That probably loosened it up a bit. I let it sit. I was a bit impatient before trying to rush it. We're good to go now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up a little bit just to kind of get some of the corrosion off. You want to do as good as you can. When you put the new rotor on that way you don't run into this issue in the future again uh it is gonna be a little bit difficult because i have the stud so i got to kind of work around it i think i'm just going to take some some sandpaper just kind of clean it up just a little bit all right let's go look at that i mean like i said before these are beautiful definitely the best looking brake rotor in my opinion sorry for the loud diesel in the background driving through i live right off of the uh, main road there i got the set screw back in got this cleaned up pretty good Let's go ahead and get the caliper back on and then we'll move over to the passenger side. All right, we're getting there. The rear bolts are back in the 21 mils. We're gonna use a torque wrench and tighten to 200 Newton meters or roughly 150 foot pound. But if you have a torque wrench, it should be in both measurements. So again, 200 Newton meters, top one, the bottom one. Then we're gonna go ahead and reconnect all the wires in the spots that they go, reconnect the bracket, put the wheel back on, and then we're done. You guys ready for it? Name a better looking wheel and brake combo. I'll wait. Now nah, I'm just kidding, there's a lot of nice cars out there, but I mean, come on. The Volks with the O34, with the yellow calipers. Uh, in the calipers are Hawk Ceramics. Don't know if I ever mentioned that before, but I mean, this just looks fantastic. All right, enough bragging. Uh, the 221 mils back there suck to try to tighten if you're doing this on the ground, but I was able to get it to the proper torque spec. The way that I did it was I ran the torque wrench this way and then I pulled down. 
and that worked out pretty well. Got it taken care of. So this side's done. Let's go ahead and torque these and we'll go to the other side and on to the rear. Okay, so obviously, as you can see, it's on a jack, jack stand, wheels off. Let's go ahead and do the same thing we did the other side and uh, we'll show you the end result. Don't forget, we are going to remove these wires from the bracket that they're being held in by. Remove the bracket itself. Back here, down there, if I can get the angle right. Uh, the 21's on the back side. Pop that out. Smack the rotor, well, first, penetrating oil in here. Smack the rotor very hard with your biggest hammer or your purse, whatever you got. And that's it, put it back together. Hey guys, while I'm waiting on this uh, PB blaster to soak in, we got everything off, uh, obviously. Just waiting on that to soak, then I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. I did wanna let you guys know, I'm not a mechanic by trade. I do this for fun, uh, I like filming videos, I like working on my own stuff and, and other people's cars as well. But if this is something that you are thinking about doing, brakes, rotors, pads, whatever you gotta do, uh, if you have any mechanical skills, this is fairly easy. Just wanna make sure you have the right tools, the right uh, torque specs, everything like that. And just follow a DIY or a tutorial. Some companies, they even give you that along with the parts. So, you know, feel very confident if this is something that you wanna do. All right, hey guys, so uh, this is where I stopped for now. We got the passenger side complete. Good to go, torque down, all set. Reason why I'm pausing for now is I'm actually gonna go look at a house. So, fingers crossed and wish me luck. I'll be back to finish up the rears. All right guys, uh, we're back. Went and took a look at a house, really nice. Uh, I might put an offer in on it. It's got a three car garage and a pool. So, big, big bonus there. But anyways, we've got the passenger side rear jacked up, wheels off, ready to go. You can see there just trying to figure out if i absolutely have to do the vcds rear parking brake release i'm not replacing the pads my understanding is that the pads are low the further it goes in because it's an electronic parking brake it actually pushes the piston in and as the brake pads wear down apparently uh it just closes up the gap and less and less and less but since my pads are brand new i'm trying to figure out if i absolutely have to do that and uh i have vcds but the parking brake option in mine is not working so that's a little sus so hopefully waiting to hear back here from sean from 034 or one of you guys on facebook i posted it just to see uh thoughts and comments so i'm gonna wait and uh we'll go from there hey we are back, it's the next morning. Uh, no luck yesterday with the VADCOM, but we've got the laptop ready today and I've got some clear instruction on what to do. So I'm gonna show you guys that step-by-step step, uh, here in a second. All right, so I'm gonna try to show you guys the screen here. Uh, I'm in VCDS, just go to ABS brake, basic settings, and then there is start lining change mode. Hit go. And then right here, we've got parking brake malfunction because, well, it's in service mode right now. And what you didn't hear is in the background, I could hear it, uh, the electronic motor for the parking brake was spinning itself back in so that it gives us enough room to change out these rotors. And I will show you guys that when I get back to the brakes. So we still have the car jacked up and I did have to go ahead and put the factory stuff back on because I couldn't fit the new rotor with the pads. The pads are brand new, but there's a lip actually on the rotor, pretty decent sized lip here. And that's why I was unable to fit this uh, this back on with the parking brake engaged still. So this should give me enough room. Inside here is the actual motor that retracts back that way and gives you more room. I'm gonna go ahead and get this phone back apart and show you guys the result. Big shout out to Bradley Wilkie on uh, Facebook. You point me in the right direction as far as the VCDS programming goes, and we're done. I was able to make it fit, got the e-brake retracted, everything went on uh, pretty smoothly. So this is done, I need to torque the carrier bolts. Those are uh, 100 Newton meters plus a 90 degree turn, and that should be that. Everything else is already plugged up as you can see, everything is good to go in there. Wires are all secured, set screws in place, everything's good. Let's go ahead, torque these down, make sure everything else is good, and throw the wheel back on, knock out the other side. All right, so we've got everything off, set screws out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my method of beating the crap out of this to get it off. Rule of choice, 
hammer. First, I'm just gonna tap around the hub here. This is just so if the brake rotor is being held to the hub by any rust or corrosion, it kind of knocks it free a little bit. Also, pro tip, if you're gonna reuse your rotors, don't do this. As you can see, that worked perfectly. All right, guys, we are done. Done, done, done. Now I've just got to hop back in the car. We're going to go ahead and re-enable the parking brake. And then officially, we're done. All right. And actually, I shouldn't even say officially we're done because I still have to do a proper bedding procedure. So we'll have to do that after this. So again, ABS brakes, settings, end lining change mode. What you didn't hear, probably didn't hear, is in the back, I could hear it re-engaging the parking brake motor. Let's test the parking brake. Okay. Seems good. All right, well, I think that ends this video. I'm gonna go ahead and get cleaned up because I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I am just drenched. It is crazy hot today, and it's not even summer yet, so yay Florida. But maybe, just maybe, if I get this house I looked at, or a different house if I don't get this one, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and insulate it and probably run HVAC in it. Just seems like the way to go down here. You want some cold air in the garage. The garage we currently have is just a single car. The laundry room is in there as well and it's hot, hot, hot. Uh, that's why I'm working outside right now because it's a little bit cooler with the breeze going. Again, massive shout out to uh, Sean and the whole team at 034 Motorsport uh, for you know coming on board to the channel. I'm gonna be getting some more parts from them, drivetrain, braces, stuff like that. Hopefully stiffen this thing up a bit. Another big shout out to Andrew at ORT uh, for having these actually in stock and ready to go. He got them down to me uh, just in time for me to go to Helen. So uh, again, if you guys are gonna be there, if you see me, it's, I might be the only purple S4 there. I, I guess we'll find out. But yeah, if you see me, stop by, say hi, take a look at the car. I don't know if I'm gonna be in Integrated's booth this time or have anything to do with the show, but I'll be going to a couple meets. I'll be driving around, stuff like that. So, you know, feel free to come up and say hi. And as always, if you like this video, you found it informative, give me a big thumbs up and uh, if you don't subscribe already please do so I'm trying to get to the uh, thousand point mark I'm you know almost halfway there still working on views and stuff like that I would love for this thing to be more active uh, it's just it's tough to do full-time job army reserves etc etc you know just a bunch of life excuses and yeah until next time you guys take care I almost forgot you guys favorite part of uh, watching my videos Archer come here There he is. Tell everybody goodbye. We'll see you next time. Bye.